All right. Welcome, Coach. How are you? Coach Millie has a sick child. How are you? I didn't even ask. I don't have a sick. Well, you did you ask. Don't. Like you I said, really I, mean, I cut you off. You just really were not interested. <laughs> How in are you? Answer. Goodbye. It's like whenever you just say, fine in you. Yeah. Whenever you're someone like, oh, hi, fine in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just got Yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Just wrapped up a training session, I yes, know. So I, I, I have not trained yet. I have trained some others. Um, so uh, it's been a few weeks since we sat down. I uh, had the holidays. Uh, we've had some other uh, kind of guests come into our realm, um, but kind of back in the saddle on some things. And one of the things that we're going to uh, focus on is um, just kind of get a, this is going to cap or start off a series for us um, going over what we call the, the 10 general physical skills in CrossFit. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. But um, I thought I'd kind of tell a little story to kind of get us there. So, there go. Um, so back when I started uh, I'll get, CrossFit, I'll get in the car. Yeah, you, I'm, in the, I'm in the passenger seat. Yes. You guys come sit come with me. Come with me on this ride down memory lane. So uh, I started CrossFit. Honestly, the, the way I got exposed to CrossFit was I had a football coach. I had finished playing college football. I had a football coach tell me like, hey, uh, have you seen this website that has like these crazy the workouts on it? He's like, they have these crazy workouts in there. Sounds like right up your alley. And I'm like, I don't even know what I've been doing in the gym right now. They think that this is right up my alley. But he, he said, uh, yeah, it's just like CrossFit thing, right? So I get on CrossFit.com. Back in the day, CrossFit.com was like a WordPress site. You know, it was, it was not what it is today. It is not. It is not. It, yeah, not at all. It's one of those things I feel really fortunate to have like that perspective of I saw the beginning. Like, yeah, this is even before like people like it was incredibly difficult to share a video online. Correct. So like you had some of the top names and the, on the message board. Yeah. Sharing times on these HT workouts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So cross, CrossFit.com, that's how I started getting all my workouts. Well, um, I wasn't going to a CrossFit gym at the time. I didn't have other CrossFit coaches around me or anything else like that. I wasn't certified to CrossFit at the time yet. Um, and so, yeah, you would have these message boards where we would all like, we'd get the workout at 9 PM the night before. Um, and then from there refresh. you would, yeah, refresh. you'd refresh until it posted, right. Start around 8 45. Yeah. Start pressing refresh. Like, ah, maybe it's going to be out of order. I can go better early if I, if I get to see it. Early. Yeah. Or I better leave the bar early if it's uh, a crazy workout that I need to prepare for. Cause you know, again, I was, you know, pretty well just out of college or just wrapping up college. Um, so the the other thing to that was like you you know you do the workout and then you post your times on the message board that was like the whiteboard back in the day because you know I wasn't going to a gym and you'd scroll the message boards to see everything you, else the original worldwide leaderboard yes the the original um, precursor to the open if you didn't know an exercise you would get onto their exercise library which was all basically quick time videos if you remember that if you're old enough to remember online videos and you know, the internet had just been born, obviously. Yeah, this, so, this is the time where the internet was like starting to become less inconvenient to you. Right. Is really where we were at in time. I mean, we were, this is pre-2010 for you. Yeah. Because so I started, seven, yeah, I started in February of 2010. Yeah. So so these quick time videos, you know, you'd watch a movement and be like, I don't know how to do that. So you go to this movement and you'd be like watching this grainy video, like, okay. And then I'd like go back into the gym and, and try to do the movement. Then I come back in. Like the first time I realized there was a false grip in a ring muscle up was like mind blowing to me. I'm like, oh, that's how you do this thing. That's how people, right? that's how people are. Uh, over. Yeah. So, so anyways, but in the same light, CrossFit started, um, Greg Glassman, who, who is the, the founder of CrossFit, he, he started writing articles for what he called the CrossFit journal. Um, and the CrossFit journal still exists today. Um, all of these articles that were created years and years ago uh, are still around, and a lot of them still um, hold true to the CrossFit methodology and principles um, that a lot of CrossFit programs are built on today. One of those articles was this What is Fitness article, and what is the What is Fitness article defined what CrossFit's view of fitness was, and truly, this was the first time that we really had a specific definition about uh, what, what fitness really is not, you know, cause back then, back in the day, you would have just thought like, well, the fittest athletes are triathletes or they're whatever. And decathlon, and decathlon yeah. another, right. Well, the decathlon might've been the, the, the best composers, closest, right. But there's really only three events in a decathlon. They just do it tender and they do the same like few things. Sure. Of course. And, but Glassman really came down to it and said, listen, if I'm looking for overall general fitness, okay, then my my approach to this is then there should be these categories or what he deemed these general physical skills that if you are 
are you if you're capable or your capacity in those 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 10 physical skills quantifies then, your fitness yes absolutely and so so these 10 physical skills um got got published in this what is fitness article and what they are they're cardiorespiratory endurance stamina strength flexibility power coordination agility balance and accuracy that's a lot okay but over this time, what we're going to do over, over a handful of episodes here is we're going to discuss what these general physical skills are, um, the definition of them, but then also how we train them and kind of why we train them at CrossFit Metro East, um, and then why they're beneficial to each kind of category of our clients that we work with. So um, I think the other interesting thing he did with that is he then put create a hierarchy as well. Yeah, for he sure. Was, you know, create a hierarchy on like, this one feeds, the next one feeds, the next one, a gap in this lower. It basically, he, his idea was a gap in this creates a deficiency in blank. And mm. everything that would fit, fit into that blank goes north of it in the um, in the hierarchy because it's a limiter. We're right. starting with the base of the pyramid, which is cardiovascular and respiratory yeah. fitness. Yeah, so we are. We're going to talk about cardiorespiratory uh, fitness to, uh, endurance today and, and how we train it, what, what the definition of that is couple other things on the 10 general physical skills, and we'll highlight this in this episode, and we'll probably just brush over this in, in, in later episodes, but CrossFit's position also, also mentioned in this What is Fitness article, um, and we'll link that in the show notes, uh, but uh, the big thing here is appropriate programming will expand someone's capacity in each of these areas without biasing any one area. Now, Coach talked about the base of the pyramid being cardiovascular and respiratory endurance. Um, there are there are things that we have priority in, but none of our training or appropriate programming shouldn't be biasing any one of those, especially for the general fitness client. And that's typically what we're doing in a, in a CrossFit fitness that's area, good, yeah. not necessarily sport. We'll, we'll touch on that. Um, the other thing is, is that you are as fit as you are competent in each of these 10 general physical skills. Um, and then also improvements in endurance, stamina, strength, and flexibility, those come about through training, okay? Those are training influence, right? Training refers to that activity that improves performance through measurable organic changes in the body. Um, but by contrast, improvements in coordination, agility, balance, and accuracy come through practice. You talk about this term practice sometimes <laughs> when we're in a training ses session because we practice new movements a lot we practice different positions we practice different loads and that practice is really a development of improving coordination agility balance and accuracy and i think yeah. that that's that's a huge yeah. piece there accuracy is definitely a big one mm, yeah uh, in training. um and then the last thing power and speed okay so power and speed are also two pieces of that um those are adaptations that occur both in training and practice you know so when I improve, when I practice agility and coordination and balance, it does improve my speed and power distribution in, in other things. And those become like qualities of strength. Like power is a quality of strength. Yeah. Speed is a quality of strength. Yeah. And like, then again, if we were to go back to the pyramid, you'll, you'll find those things in there. You'll find, again, those all fit, fit together as well. Now, something that, so we're going to touch on, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to give you CrossFit's definition of, of cardiovascular respiratory endurance, like a big old, big old phrase there, word there. It's a whole lot of letters, right? My, my definition is, well, isn't that much simpler. No. Or isn't that much more complicated. No, but, uh, but coach has, coach has a, another thing that he, he really likes the way, but uh, cross the definition is the ability of the body systems to gather, process, and deliver oxygen. What was, what was one that you kind of like the way it's, it's phrased? Um, I, for just like, because I like the way it speaks to the general public, it's the amount of time a muscle group can endure, to, can endure an effort. Perfect. Um, so like you said, so, I mean, it's not really saying anything very different, no. but I, I did, I think that I really appreciated that phrasing. I was like, that is speaking to the people that don't already know the definition. Correct. Like, why does it matter if my, my oxygen is improved and how it transports to my body? Because it allows me to, <laughs> it, it's, to it's endure an activity. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, I thought we'd touch on like, what does this look like in a, in a workout setting coach? Like how, how does not necessarily the specific workout, but what does this look like in a, in a workout setting typically? Um, I mean, if we're going to focus on it for the day, that is, you're going to be your, it's going to be your, uh, monostructural movements, your running, rowing, skiing, biking, 
jump rope, rope jump, uh, jumping rope is another one. Like yeah. there, any of those, like your traditional cardio would be, fits the bill really well. Um, we do, the way we typically do it is we do the aerobic capacity type, mm -hmm. yeah. type program, which basically kind of, it takes your, your cardiovascular work and it puts it into kind of a sets and reps sort of scheme uh, and allows us to be progressive mm -hmm. and very, and it also works really well to modify through varying skill levels the similar to how we would do a strength day where we're going to practice movements that can build the quality of strength. Yeah. Um, so those are typically, if we're going to focus on it, the other piece of the puzzle is that the work, this work gets thrown around a lot and it's actually, it's one of like, it's just incorrect. It's poor phrasing, but it, it gets the message out, which is conditioning. Sure. Um, conditioning is just simply whatever you're doing. Right. Um, if I sit in my chair all day, for seven hours, that's conditioning. I'm conditioning my my, my, my body <laughs> right. to be able to endure sure. seven hours of sitting in a chair, which is not really great for what right. the body wants to do. Um, but so, but to, but to use like, you know, in conditioning, like it, it's all of our different energy systems, you know, it's, it's our longer, it's our shorter, you know, it's, you know, you'll find somebody who's really good at running a marathon. I can, they're probably going to die trying to do a couple hundred meter sprint repeats right? and vice versa. Because we've built that level of, we've built that component of our cardiovascular Ooh. system, sure. but not the other. And then, so as we get as, to be generalist, we can use our, our our wads, which generally get called conditioning. They are a form of like it's a way to condition different qualities of this. Yeah, something to to highlight here as well is the reason it's a single modality uh, piece that we typically focus on when we're doing a you know row capacity or something like that is usually uh, these are more. Uh, these are days where we're training maybe a specific heart rate or respiratory rate. And when we change to different modalities in a training session, those affect the, the systems differently, right? So if I were doing, if I was doing a 400 meter run, my energy systems are challenged differently or my respirations and my heart rate are challenged differently than then when I go and grab a barbell and do 10 clean and jerks, okay? So we typically to train effectively in this, and really focusing on that cardiorespiratory endurance, it's important to stick to a modality that stays the same for the body. So you're having a similar response in that cardiovascular and respiratory. Something system. that we can have pretty uniform control mm -hmm. and then consistency, yeah. which is endurance. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like endurance feeds your ability to be consistent and accurate. Um, so you know, that's exactly right. I guess that's why that is why, because like you get into a workout and you may see like it's, Going to be pull-ups, a uh, decent length row, and we'll, go, we'll keep cleaning jerks in the mix. Okay. One person may look at it and be like, oh, I'm going to gas on the pull-ups. I got to be really patient and a little smoother on the cleaning jerks, and I'll do the row how I do the row. Yeah. And then you may look at it as like, I'm going to crush the cleaning jerks. I'm going to get after the pull-ups, and I'm going to go a little slow on the row. Yeah. What what's like like the, 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 there's no uniform no there's no uniform it, right? yeah do, will you get fitter yes sure are they as are they is it as reliable not by a long like not, like not at close again so that's why we spend time with the practice component every couple of weeks doing a, an aerobic capacity workout yeah um, no that's 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 really good point there coach um, okay so so why is this why is this general physical skill important and I felt like. You know, we have we have clients that whether in their group classes, whether in our personal training clients, uh, whatever it may be, um, different clients are here for different things. You know, we we that's why we do a, an introductory consult to find out what are your goals, and then how do we build a plan specifically for you to help you reach those goals. But my goals of just trying to stay in shape at you know almost forty versus the client who is getting ready to try to run. Uh, do an Ironman versus the client that is in their 70s and just wants to stay active in their in their age versus our strength athlete potentially. All of us have different goals. So I thought, you know, there's probably three categories though of our clients that we work with. We have a lot of clients. We're a gym, right? And why do people exercise? A lot of times because they want to change their body, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of that comes from losing weight. Now we talk to clients about, you know, healthy ideas around that and focusing on body composition versus true weight, weight, but um, but weight loss is a common goal of a lot of our clients when they start with us. Um, so we have weight loss. We're going to talk about the performance athlete. So if you're geared towards improving performance, like the person that might be doing triathlon or strength event or something like that. Um, but then we're also going to talk about just our general fitness and what I call like our fitness and function folks, right? They're, they're, they're staying active. They're exercising 
because they want to just the the question I get or the response I get a lot is like I just want to feel better, right? Like okay, well then their quality of life is not as good, and they're just trying to improve their quality of life, their engagement with with their kids, their family. They, they generally want to move the needle. Yeah. So um, so first of all, I thought we'd kind of cover each one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on the fast fat loss here, coach. I'm gonna let you kind of take over the performance side because I know you got some thoughts on that. Um, so for our fat loss clients, okay. Well, if I do, if I increase my capacity in my cardiovascular and respiratory systems, okay, essentially remember this, like, like the definition states, like these, the cardiorespiratory system and the respiratory, or the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system, they are the systems that are the, that create the vehicles to transport everything that we need in our body, right? So the nutrients, the oxygen, all of that stuff is transferred through our blood and, and, and those systems work together to have a fine-tuned, efficient machine, okay? Well, if part of that system is fat oxidation, okay? So when we, when we improve our cardiovascular and respiratory systems, we also improve our body's ability to oxidize fat. That happens not only by the improvement of the system itself for your day-to-day, but it also happens usually within those training sessions because we typically are doing cardiovascular and respiratory work is done at what we'd call a sub-maximal level. And so the body has different energy systems and typically in those aerobic capacity type workouts, we are utilizing energy systems that promote fat oxidation versus utilization of carbohydrates or deterioration of protein. You know, so, so the systems are always working at the same time within the body but there are different workouts that stimulate a system more, yeah. more effectively. And, and I think one of the things that you brought up the big time, I think it's doesn't get looked at as people look at their, their hour in the gym, but what this does to your calorie caloric burn mm -hmm. through the rest of the day. And this is also a big, a big thing that we'll probably talk about strength training as well, but like that activity when done well. And again, especially when you get, when you aren't like, if it's just always maximal, your body's just too busy recovering Mm -hmm. to, to try to like you beat it out of me today yeah and whereas you get these like sub maximal you're not as much of the system because like you said all the systems are always working whether you train right. them or not whether you acknowledge them or not oh i don't need sleep yes you do um you know whether that that's going on this these workouts will it's not just that one hour that they're right. burning extra calories the system is going to continue the it, it the engine's going to keep burning yeah the other piece that coach mentioned was the, the base of the pyramid being this cardiorespiratory and, uh, systems. And these uh, that base of the system, again, begins to improve the function of all other systems. So if you're that person that wants to lose fat and the lowest barrier to entry and exercise is usually cardiorespiratory injury, it's, it also is, is building the base of the pyramid for you to do all the other things well. Yeah. So that when you improve that system, now when you go into the higher intensity CrossFit workout or the heavier AMRAPs or whatever else it may be, because your energy systems are improved at functioning, you also are then able to improve your output in those higher intensity efforts, which then again, increases caloric burn within those sessions. So, so even when you're not doing slow steady state cardio, or you're not doing the aerobic capacity work, the effect of the aerobic ca capacity work on the systems increases your output on these other higher intensity pieces that then allow you to burn more calories, which then allows you to burn more fat and utilize your energy stores more effectively. So um, that's our fat loss client. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the performance app. Um, so I mean, this is basically your ability to do the work that you want to do. Um, so uh, we got in here, like one of the things you'll see, and I'm going to start with someone who, with this with a performance athlete that maybe we're, we're going to go ahead and just start with strength because sure. this is the, this is the big discussion. I want, I, all I care about is deadlifted. All I care about is this, that, and the other, I don't need this. Well, this is your ability to transport oxygen. Yeah. The other base of the pyramid with the base of the pyramids drawn out like this and cardiovascular is right here. Well, this line at the bottom, that's your breath. That's your ability to transport oxygen. And there is nothing that will limit you faster than inefficiency there. Sure. So plain and simple, if you don't have any base here, you're not, your, your ability to perform it like what your body's actually capable of does not exist. Mm -hmm. you, you lack that basic proficiency right. Um, right there. And then the other piece of the big puzzle for all of whether or not you're, you're like big time endurance athletes like triathlon and all that, you know, 
or again, we want to power lift, we want to throw Highland games, whatever it is, it's your recovery between makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Um, but like plain and simple, you want to train for an hour, you have to be able to work for an hour, right? You, if you're going and we don't have that base, well, what's the best way to, the best way to build it's going to be the lowest barrier to entry, right? That's that look steady state cardio. That's that spending some time on the bike, you know, even again, if you're a power lift, you know, you're a bigger guy. Yeah. Go with something a little bit lower impact. Doesn't mean we all have to run. Right. That's the big issue. <laughs> Everybody thinks cardio, I have to run. Yeah. And you know, some of like the fighters I've been working with, it's the same thing. Like, guys, you, we don't have to run. Mm -hmm. We've got this rower. We've got the skier. This can be way easier on the joints for what you're trying to yeah. do. And we can build that base. And again, a lot of these are, especially if you're getting into the machines, there are, there's some amount power output bias. Yep. The rower, the bike, the skier, all your concept two machines are power machines. Yep. They build a lot of cardiovascular, but so again, it's your ability to repeat your effort. Again, we're back to, do you want to train for, do you want to have the ability to truly train hard for an hour mm -hmm. or are you in the gym for an hour and a half because it takes you seven minutes between sets to recover? Yeah. Like you fun. become wildly inefficient in your training. Um, and then you show up on meet day and you don't have, you know, for powerlifting, you've got nine big lifts you have to do. Well, they're going to be spread out. You have to have that ability. You have to have the recoverability. You have to have the ability to turn it back on, but you have to have all those skills. Like I can definitely say, like, I remember my very first Highland game after my amputation and I did not have the cardiovascular base at this point. Like I just hadn't built it to throw, to throw for five hours. Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted to get back out on the field and feel whether or not I wanted to do more of it. Um, the group I was in, they just kept taking breaks in between. And I, because I didn't have that base, I just ran out of gas. Like I just ran out of power. I didn't lose proficiency. I did my worst on my best events because they were the, my last ones. Yeah. And had I had a better cardiovascular base, I would have had a better time with that game. Um, so yeah, for the performance, like, even like you said, the strength athletes who we're really going to talk about because they're the ones that want to deny this that they don't want to, this is why I lift. Right. I don't want to run. I don't want to this. It's like, we'll understand that some amount of that, sometimes that small investment mm -hmm. a couple times a week will pay off seven days a week. Right. Again, it's, it's take one of your off days and use it as a zone two day, you know, yeah. 30 to 30 to 60 minutes, just low intensity on a bike. Like all that does is flush his blood. And again, it improves your, ability to again transport oxygen which is the base of everything yep um it's it's one of those things that in 2023 it shocks me that we're still having the conversation <laughs> yeah. um but yeah like cardiovascular system is an absolute must for anyone trying to maximize any one of our 10 physical skills yep. like if you want to move into that more specialized or you know re, you know regardless if you want to specialize by one percent i'm going to do crossfit but I, you know what i want to do a I want, to, I want to do a little bit of extra strength programming. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a form of specialization, but it's very minimal. Right. Whether or not you're doing that minimal to the maximal, like I'm going to be a lifter and that's it. All of these get in, like any of these 10 skills will be positively affected by this. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why it's at the base of the pyramid. Um, so uh, that was really great. And and again, I, uh, you know, I know we hit, hit on the, the, the strength athlete just to be able to do the work. Um, but, uh, even those, those folks, I'll, I'll touch on the CrossFit athlete because I hear it a lot. I, I, yeah, yeah, but, yeah super missed there. Yeah. yeah, no, that's okay. But the CrossFit athlete, I mean, the person that like always feels like they, they want to hit Metcon, 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 and we'll talk about metabolic conditioning. I know that's a phrase that like we would yeah. argue that everything's yeah. metabolic yeah. conditioning. Okay. But I understand that your yeah. language, you, you vibe with using, Metcon using, language. The, vernac using yes. the vernacular. So that being said is that you know, we're doing 21, 15 nines and we're doing, you know, 10 minute AMRAPs and we're doing seven minutes of this, and, you know, like, and you guys are hitting all this volume in what we would call classic CrossFit training. But the reality is, is that if your energy systems in your cardio, your cardiovascular and your respiratory systems are not trained or not improved in that baseline work, you cannot continue to maximize your body's ability to do repeated high intensity power outputs, right? Mm -hmm. That's CrossFit, right? You mean like in a CrossFit competition? Oh, you sure? Like you mean, you mean like five workouts in a day? Multiple yeah. events in a right. Day. So, so those of you that are like, oh man, I don't want to sit on a rower for a five k, or I don't want to, I don't want to do this like 
you know, five round rowing workout. The reality is, is that those are ways that we are developing that base of the pyramid. And if you don't have that, you will have a gap in all the other things that you're trying to do in CrossFit, the sport or prop or classic CrossFit workouts. Shrink so, the base of the pyramid, shrink the peak. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, all right. So then uh, touching on like our general fitness clients. And so this is probably a big chunk of our, our population. Even if a client says, I'd like to lose some weight, but you get this phrase a lot when we're sitting down. We really ask that client to define this when we sit down in, in their goal, our, in their initial consults. And then even in their goal reviews is to define this idea of like, I just want to feel better. Yep. Okay. So what that really means is that person, they want to they want to improve their quality of life in one way, shape, or form. And they feel that by improving their fitness or the way they look or the how strong they are or whatever else it may be, their capacity, that will lead them down a path of, of feeling better and more functional. Okay. We also have our clients within that. So that's a kind of like our, you know, maybe our middle age level clients. But then we have our clients that we have our 54, five and older crowd. And they are very much starting to evaluate how functional I, am I in my day-to-day -day activities or how much function have I lost in my day-to-day -day activities over the years just because of general uh, deterioration of, of their physical condition, the, their strength. The, the belief that aging, ha aging is just a thing that happens to you is going away. Yeah. People are seeing enough examples of being a hockey fan, this thing is, this story right here is incredible. Yarmar Yager is one of my absolute favorite players growing up as a kid. Like, I'm talking like when I was five. I'm 33 right now. Like, he was with Eve. One of <laughs> Been the, a while. He's one of the first hockey players whose names I ever know. And yesterday, this dude is 50. Saw saw an insane highlight of him playing over uh, in the Czech Republic. Just puts an insane goal. Like, the dude's 50. Yeah. Competing with 20-year-olds because he's just, he was always known for how well he took care of himself back before it was popular. Mm -hmm. So people are, they see examples like this, like, oh, aging's a result of what I do and not a thing that happens to me. Correct. Yeah. Maybe I should put my hand on the wheel. Yeah. So, so that's like kind of that, that, that area. Okay. So if you're that person, that's like, okay, why am I getting on the rower for 25 minutes today, coach? I am just trying to improve my quality of life and I'm trying to increase my function. Well, again, like we've mentioned four times in this podcast, base of the pyramid. Okay. How many, how many physical things do you love? They don't require at least 25 minutes worth of capacity. <laughs> right. So, so there, therefore, when we think about this, first of all, it's, it's prevention, right? So when we increase our cardiovascular and respiratory systems, we prevent chronic diseases such as coronary artery disease, uh, hypertension, that's high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, um, metabolic syndrome. Okay. And then also dementia, right? Those are, those are some five majors there. I can Six, think of five. very few things that have motivated a client more than a pre-diabetes um, appointment with their doctor. Yeah. I can think of very few things that have been more motivating to a client to figure it out, get it done. Mm -hmm. It's just the, like just the human condition. Yeah. Too bad, too, too bad. We, too bad. We need that. I had a lady come into today, just walked in off the street. She's like, I just found out that my blood sugar is high and I need to do something about it. Like I'm, the lady might've needed to do something about it 20 years ago. She's 70, by the way, um, might've needed to do something about it 20 years ago. But the reality is, is that she didn't have enough stimulate that that trigger for her, and then all of a sudden high, you know, high blood sugar or pre diabetic. But you know, all of a sudden those those words come out, and it's like, oh my gosh, I gotta do something. So, it's real. so so that yeah, so that's one thing. But then as you think about increasing function or or improving your quality of life, here's something that again people don't realize, but they will say that like increased functional capacity and ability to stay active longer, right? Like that's that's what we're talking about here. Well, when the heart and the lungs work more efficiently, it makes physical activity easier to, on us to do, right? So like coach said, having just the capacity to do whatever it is you want to do, like that's extremely important. That matters by how well your heart performs, how well your lungs perform. All of that starts right there. So if things are easier on our heart and lungs, we, our bodies and us for, as people will be more willing to continue to stay active. But here's what happens. The reason aging is like this, like this slippery slope thing is because people begin to lose function because their systems begin to not work as efficiently. And then their systems begin to work less efficiently because they're not as functional and not as active. You know, it's they're like getting, they're getting less input. Or more, yeah. Like, so, so the human body just does not stay static. 
Yeah. The, the human body is in motion. You are always moving back and forth. And for the most part, it's small fluctuations. But small fluctuations add up, plain and simple. They get, and to me, that is what the aging, that's how I define the aging process. Yeah. The accumulation of your, of your choices, really, over the course of your life. You choose to not go to McDonald's three times a week for 20 years. Your aging process is going to be very different than somebody who chose to go three times a week for 20 years. Definitely. Um, America, America, America is a great example. That's the only American food, as far as I'm concerned. American food is fast food. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, should have done something like pasta yeah pasta so so yeah so anyways you know that is that's really important but the the key there is from a functional capacity person from a general fitness person if your heart and lungs have to work harder naturally as we age we will become more sedentary and by improving that cardiorespiratory system we are we hope and combat that yep. okay then, to help you stay active let me just get into more and more why the general physical skills are important because a lot of these feed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, for you're, sure. if you're very weak, you, you lack strength, your heart also has to work hard. Like, and again, you can, we can go through this list and explain why a deficiency in one makes the heart work harder. Yep. But your heart's going to beat as many times as it's going to beat. Yep. Uh, I, I, there is a number out there. Like, we, we don't know what that number is, but that number exists for all of us. Just like my car is only going to turn on so many times. Yep. Like, at a certain point, it's just not going to turn over anymore, no matter how well I take care of it. For sure. So the better we take care of it, the less of it we have, the less we have to spend early on. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so yeah, so if, you know, this appeals to you, maybe you start to understand, what, well, one, why these things might be programmed, but two, like why it's important to make sure that you, you go, you do workouts like this. And if you're someone that's not in a gym, like it starts with walking right? It's, it's the lowest barrier to entry when it comes to cardiorespiratory endurance. Um, it starts with walking uh, and that's free. I, and I, last I checked at least. We were I, okay. It, it, we haven't charged anybody. You, for walking, you don't even have, you don't even have to wear shoes. Yeah. I, that's what I heard. So um, you don't even have to be at a gym. And you should always walk. Everyone should be walking like that. Like that's not like there are things that people do as a beginner and then, then like, Oh, I don't need to do this anymore. Walking is not one of those things. Um, walking is, Oh, that's everyone's job. Everyone should be going on walks because we don't live in a world that forces most of us to walk around. Yep. It's the number one thing I recommend to somebody if they tell me, uh, like, what should I be doing to in, improve my health? That's my um, answer to, I want to feel better. I Yeah. I start there. Do you walk? Yeah. Go for walks, uh, drink more water, get more sleep. Okay. <laughs> All three free activities. Look at um, the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, hey, uh, real quick, as always, if you want to learn more about how to improve your health and fitness to live a better life for you and the people around you, that's our mission here. Like that is that is truly our mission. It is to help our people live better lives through better health and fitness, because we believe that the impact and the ripple effect that makes on them, the people around them and their communities, like that's that's the the message we want to deliver to our people. Um, you can jump on CrossFit or um, CrossFitMetroEast.com or CrossFit dash metroeast.com there's a hyphen in there somewhere you might be able to get there the other way too you can google us it, our website will pop up first but there's a learn more button you can jump on kick that or put that learn more button put a couple of things in there with your contact information we'll reach out to set up an initial consult it's free um it's opportunity to sit down allows us to talk to you about your goals and if there's a way that we can help so coach appreciate it so much there's today this is a great session we're going right, to talk so more yeah we're going to talk more like about stuff. these um, I'm sure there's going to be some rabbit holes we get down, down, but, uh, Never. I think we stay on pretty, pretty good topics today. So only but, three things I said weren't on the, weren't, on the, weren't originally planned. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, Hey, take care guys. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> I felt like myself getting ready to cough for the whole last 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm like, don't do